everybody what's going on Eric here hope you guys are doing good I'm doing just great today I am wanting to get this thing buffed out and get a nice gloss finish on this thing pretty much done with everything that has to be uh, done with the sanding and the epoxy and everything else you kind of see that well, I'm using 3000 grit sandpaper on wet sanding with an electrical device yeah I wouldn't recommend doing this uh, but I'm getting the results that I'm really look, wanting to look for or wanting to get. And if you could see the uh, kind of get a nice gloss back on the finish over here and uh, without buffing it. So I've got to finish up the top. Actually, the top seems, looks like the top is pretty much finished. So let's go ahead and work on the back of this thing. And I got to do the side jet and everything. So it's nice, flat surface. There's no bumps, no craters, no nothing. Uh, this is a real nice flat surface. And the nice thing about using this tool that I'm using, which is kind of like a mouse, uh, this is a Craftsman mouse sander, all right? And uh, it uses hook loop, Velcro, whatever you want to call it for whatever pads that you're going to put on there. Now, again, I'm using the 3000 grit pad and, uh, you know, well, it's a flat surface on a flat surface. So it's making my job a lot easier as far as sanding this thing. And I can already see that this is doing a better job than me trying to do it by hand because it's getting a lot of the 2500 grit sandpaper scratches out of it and I could see it. This came out really nice. Just remember I had a blob of shit over here and uh, there was a nice hump and it came out pretty good. It's nice and flat now. The neck, I've got a little bit of a satin neck on here and I also did a little work on the headstock. So what I want to do is I want to put a little water, splash a little water on the surface of this thing and then start going to town with sanding. So then I take the pads off of here. They're not dry, but they're just a little damp. I'll put them back inside the water. And I'm gonna wipe this thing down. This is making it a lot easier to get the sheen that I'm looking for before buffing. A lot easier. You now some of you guys might say, well, you know, you're mixing electricity with water. Yeah, well, I'm pushing my own luck, ain't I? 
So I'm getting a nice reflection, sort of, kind of, already with this. And it is really, really smooth. So I'm going to go ahead and do these edges and get them done the same way. The only problem is I'm not going to be able to get inside these horns, so that will have to be done by hand. Not a big deal, but man, this is coming out really nice, really smooth. And when I hit this with the buffer, it's going to make it real easy to basically buff this thing out. Oh yeah, this is going to be nice. All right. All right, so right now I've got kind of like a little shield going on over here. I got a towel on the back wall, I've got some cardboard on the sides of me. I've got my white smock on, plastic, and I got some plastic laid out in here because this next step is buffing and it slings shit all over the place. Kind of sucks when you got a lot of electronics and computers and stereo in here and shit like that, that uh, yeah, this shit gets all over the place. So I'm not worried about the fretboard because I still have to do some cleaning on it. I'm not worried about it at all. So what I really want to do is work on just the finish itself. Now, kind of see here, I did a little bit of a change up on the headstock to kind of even out things with the body and the headstock a little bit. It's a little bit of flaws in there. I don't know why, but something blue was either on the pinstriping or something and it got sealed didn't notice it when I put the pinstriping on, but it's sealed up under the pinstriping or under the uh, epoxy. So I don't know if something um, was on the pinstriping and the epoxy set it off or what. But I'm going to start buffing that out first and work my way down. So I'm going to be using the number one rubbing compound. This is going to be done in real time. So if you get bored really quickly, you might want to fast forward or something. Because this is going to get, uh, it's going to be kind of boring to watch this. It's going to be long and uh, yeah. So go ahead and put a few drops of rubbing compound on the surface. Don't need too much. A couple of drops will do. I'm using the coarser, this pad here, the yellow pad, is a lot coarser than the other two. The other two are for uh, milder cutting creams rubbing compounds. This one here is for coarser. So I'm going to end up doing the coarse first and then going into with the mild. So I'm going to go ahead and start with the headstock, like I said, and let's go. Oh, wait a minute here. I want high speed. Oh, that's the battery on this one. Let me go get the other battery. All right, here we go. Oh, wow, what a difference. See what kind of a mess I'm making over here. Not too bad. So it's bringing back the shine. Nice gloss. I'm going to have to clean out some areas over here.
at all with that first cut. Alright, so now I can hit it with the second cutting cream, which is a lot milder of a cut than what this one is. Yeah, I'm already wearing this shit. Now I do have the different colored pads for different cutting creams, because each pad is a lot lighter than the other pad. And I just put a little bit in the middle. All right, so that is like just the first. There's the headstock on this. That's just, you know, going over it real quick. The way that 3000 grit sandpaper works is it's a real fine cut, so it's almost polishing the surface as it's, uh, you know, as you're using the 3000 grit sandpaper, but not enough to give you the high gloss without the cutting creams. So I want to hit this one more time. And what I'm using here is the machine polish number two. So I just need just a small drop, not much.
just to bring that finish out just a little bit more. here now I switch pads again and this time I want to use the real real light polishing pad And with this, I'm going to use the Scratch Doctor. Uh, Scratch Doctor is not a polish. It's basically going to help just any small scratches from the rubbing compounds that you might see swirl marks or whatever. This will end up taking care of it. This, because it's so liquidy, I'm going to put it on the pad itself just a little bit once it gets to the top. There you go. Just a little bit, a little drop. I'm going to rub that on there. So I don't want that to damage the truss rod. So far, I'm not making that big of a mess with this. Little shields I made are helping out. So the headstock pretty much is done. So we went from a dull finish with a little bit of a sheen to it to where it gets a reflection to a high gloss finish. And when you're doing something like this, you don't want your black to look gray. If it has like a gray haze to it, then you're not doing it right or if you have blotches of gray patches in it you're not doing it right and make sure you hit the whole surface evenly not sit in one spot too long because you could burn through your finish although i highly doubt you're going to burn through the epoxy resin because this stuff is a little bit on the thick side so let's get into the body now and start uh polishing that up just like we just got the headstock so i want to put a little bit of a wax in a few minutes I'm going to put a little bit of a wax coating on the headstock and what I like to use is this ceramic Mac wax made by McGuire's. Stuff works really, really nice. It has a nice scent to it as well. So I want to protect that surface while I'm doing this surface here so whatever splashes over there um, is not going to affect or do anything. So if I have any of the coarser rubbing compound that I'm working on over here and it splashes on that side, um, it's not going to leave a spot through on the finish or do something kind of like the, um, uh, you know, coffee cup on the coffee table, get a ring on the wood. I don't want to have that type of effect going on over here. 
So I'm gonna protect that surface. Right now, it's not, the surface is not hot because I wet the pads every time I use a, um, anytime I do any type of uh, uh, buffing, I will like kind of lukewarm water, not really cold, not really hot. I don't think it really matters. And I kind of use, to do things a certain way. These things are like a sponge, they absorb the water. So what I end up doing with it is I'll end up uh, putting it under some lukewarm water, squeezing out the excess water, rinsing them out again, and leaving them just slightly damp. And that's part of the reason why I get splatter all over the place uh, when I'm doing buffing too, especially on myself, is because there's a little bit of water and it slings out. So that helps with any type of heat and friction, but you want to have a little bit of friction for the rubbing compounds to do what they're supposed to do. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit this with a little bit of wax. All right, so break time is over, and I'm gonna start off with the back of the guitar. And get this thing all polished up because when I do the front, I can't lay the front flat because of the neck, so, but I can lay it flat on the front while I do the back. So I'm gonna get the front done. I'm gonna use number one rubbing compound. Put a few drops on here. And four drops.
Let's see what we got. Not quite a high gloss, but getting close to it. Yep, not quite a high gloss, but it's getting there. That was the bottle, not me.
Yeah, I think I can go with the next next step here. backing came off the pad. It's alright, I got plenty of these things.
All right, so I'm going to go with the Scratch Doctor next. Like I said, just to get rid of any swirl marks or anything that was in the finish. So she's looking pretty good. Now that I noticed something that you can kind of see some of the wood features underneath the clear coat. And it was the way it was when I first got it as well. Kind of a little bit transparent. Now if you follow the lines here, if you can kind of see the lines and how these are kind of sharp right in here. You can see the line is kind of sharp one around the edges over here that's because of block sanding that's kind of what you want so I'm gonna work on the sides get to the front and clean up the neck
So getting into the horn area, I picked up a aluminum, uh, 14 piece aluminum polishing kit. And it's basically pretty much all cotton stuff. So in order to get into the horns, perfect size. Same thing with this one here. This one's a little bit on a taper going to the front. And you got some smaller ones here and a ball and three sizes of the round discs. But uh, yeah, so it works out pretty good. So right now I'm going to let this dry. I got a coat of wax on it. And I noticed when I did the sides, I got a couple of spots on the sides over here, right here, here, where it's kind of like a little bit bumpy. So I'm going to have to uh, re-sand the edges, just the sides a little bit. The front and back is done. Headstock is done. I got to clean the neck up after uh, and get all the rubbing compound off of this thing. But yeah, this thing came out really, really good. I'm really happy with how this turned out as far as the face and the back goes. Not too crazy about the sides. That I can work on, take care of that, and then repolish the sides. But meanwhile, with the wax on the front and the wax on the back, that's going to protect the finish a little bit from any problems with like water or, or you know runs and stuff like that from the water when I do the wet sanding. Because I'm going to have to do over the edges again, at least this side. Not so much on this side, but at least the bottom side I'm going to have to go over. Which I kind of expected that I was going to have a little bit of an issue with the sides. But all in all, this thing really, really came out good. The finish on this thing is as flat as glass. And I'll show you that in a minute. Other than the areas that are supposed to be on an angle, which they are. sure the surface is clean and there's no wax on it so you can get a really good look at this thing so let me kind of move you guys over a little bit this thing is as flat as glass Now that's a buff job. This was under the finish, the original finish, and I didn't take the original finish off, I just sanded it. So you get inside of where the cracks were. I had a touch up right over here. I'm getting had a touch up right over here. That's got dust all over it now. But you see kind of with the light how these, these edges are kind of sharp right here. And you can see the line over here and the body line going down the edges and stuff. That's because I block sanded it. Let's see if I get the whole thing in the picture. So I still have some work to do on it, but that's basically it for now. Just take care of a few things. There's my remote control cards. I got two bodies for that. Just take care of a few more things with this and uh, yeah, she'll be ready to assemble.